Avengers Assemble. Let's converse upon it. Gordon Hill Pacheco's wheelchair of range. Hello and welcome to Mario Pacheco's swivel chair of rage. I'm Mario Pacheco and this is my swivel chair. Many across our great nation, I went and saw the Avengers in IMAX 3D on opening weekend. And I must say, I found it truly awful. And that's awful in the now rare sense of inspiring awe, filling with profound reverence or respect, or profoundly impressive. So in other words, it was awesome! <laughs> it, is a, it is most certainly one of the best movies I have ever seen. My third favorite movie, Beyond the Passion of the Christ and the Nativity Story. So now it's time for me to gush about all the things I loved about this film and the very few things that needed improvement. But I promise you that there will be no spoilers in this review. G.K. Chesterton once said that there is a special place in hell for people who ruin the end of mystery stories with Judas and the other traitors. I'm sure there is an even more special level of hell for those who spoil the Avengers without proper warning. The special hell. <laughs> Avengers is about four years in the making, starting with an extra scene at the end of the 2008 film Iron Man. Featuring Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D., talking to Tony Stark about the Avengers Initiative. Similar scenes at the end of subsequent films, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America, tie all these films together and set up the Avengers. So I've been waiting for this for a long time. Now it's finally here, and it does not disappoint. This film has so many things going for it. The best thing probably is that it's directed by Joss Whedon. I love Joss Whedon. <laughs> I've seen just about everything Joss Whedon has ever made. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, even Firefly and Serenity, Dr. Horrible Sing Along Blog, and Dollhouse. All of them I absolutely love. Now the Avenger. Now the Avengers. I can't think of anyone more appropriate. Joss Whedon used to work for Marvel, you know, writing Astonishing X-Men. Diehard Whedon fans like me will be delighted to know that, as in all of Joss Whedon's work, there are a few appearances by members of Joss Whedon's circle. That's why I like to call the group of actors and actresses that Joss Whedon often relies on in most of his works. Enver Jokai, Victor of Dollhouse, has a cameo appearance as a police officer. You probably won't notice until you see his name in the credits, but there's also an appearance by Alexis Denisoff. Wesley of Buffy and Angel and Senator Perrin of Season 2 of Dollhouse. He provides the voice of the Utter, sort of the liaison between Loki and the being who provides him with his alien arm. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Never recognize Alexis Denisoff when he talks. It's like a parrot all the voices he does. Anyway, the writing is another of the best parts of the Avengers. That's just Joss Whedon's thing. Now, I saw Avatar in 3D when it was in theaters, but never again. In a way, the Avengers is like the opposite of Avatar. While the 3D special effects made up for Avatar's lack of good writing and plot, the good writing and plot of the Avengers make you not care that it's in 3D. I'm not saying you shouldn't see it in IMAX 3D, though. You have to see it in IMAX 3D. It's not like it pops out of you all the time, but the thing about IMAX 3D is there's such a clarity to the details and you can appreciate the depth. Avengers is overall an action movie, but it has a lot of funny lines and moments into it as well. Once again, that's Joss Whedon's thing. Being the wily trickster god that he is, Loki has a few good ones. Agent Coulson has a number of good ones regarding the fact that he's, he appears to be a Captain America fanboy. And he is beside himself to be alongside the real Captain America. There are a number of jokes directed at Steve Rogers' Captain America and his fish-out-of-water status, having spent the last seven years frozen in ice. 
Sometimes he doesn't quite understand what people are referring to. One in particular stands out when Nick Fury refers to two of Loki's mind control lackeys as his own personal flying monkeys. And Thor is like, monkeys? I don't understand. Where Captain America is like, I did. I understood that reference. <laughs> Finally something he understood. <laughs> the Wizard of Oz. Because <laughs> it was from 1939. Captain America does have one of my favorite lines in the film. When Thor shows up and takes Loki from Iron Man and Captain America, Black Widow warns Captain America that, he, that when he goes after them, that they're basically the gods from ancient myth. Captain America replies, There's only one god, ma'am, and I'm sure he doesn't dress like that. America being a Christian nation, 80% of Americans are Christians. Captain America confirms it for us. I heard initially that Joss Whedon had said that the film would focus mostly on Captain America. I didn't really see that. The film perfectly balances the focus on all the characters. Not surprising since Joss Whedon has worked with an ensemble cast on basically all his shows. One scene during the final battle with Loki's alien army shows this pretty well. To pan around to see the various Avengers fighting off the hordes of aliens. It was so cool. For me, the best moments belong to Iron Man, Tony Stark. Tony Stark is always the smartest guy in the room, and he lets you know it. He always has some smart remark or witty comeback. He laughs in the face of authority. When he first shows up to battle Loki, he swoops in with the Iron Man suit, and there's heavy metal music blasting on the soundtrack. Might have been Black Sabbath or ACDC, I don't know and I don't care. It was just so awesome. <laughs> I don't know if it's just as nerds or all men, but I think Tony Stark is who we all want to be. He's super smart, he's rich, and he's always surrounded by beautiful women. I don't know if he's the only Avenger with two of his own films. <laughs> he's definitely my favorite Avenger. Let me know in the comments below who's your favorite Avenger. Tony Stark owns, or maybe he bought, the funniest lines of the film. While working alongside Bruce Banner to Hulk tracking down the Tesseract by his gamma radiation, Tony Stark pokes Banner with a stick to see if he'll Hulk out. <laughs> Captain America is like, how can you endanger the lives of everyone in the helicarrier? <laughs> and he says, is everything a joke to you? Tony Stark says, funny things are. <laughs> Later on, Loki's mind control device doesn't quite work on him, Tony Stark mocks this god with a joke about impotence. Performance issues, everyone gets them. A lot of praise has been given to Mark Ruffalo's portrayal of Bruce Banner the Hulk, and it's all well deserved. We didn't praise Ruffalo saying that he portrayed Banner as a man of contradictions, which is basically what the Hulk is. I like how he's in hiding in the slums of India and he's wearing a jacket. <laughs> he's like saying, I may turn into a giant green rage monster, but that doesn't mean I can't be a gentleman. <laughs> this Hulk is significant because through motion capture technology, this is the first time Banner and the Hulk are sort of played by the same person. Despite that, the Hulk is still voiced by Lou Ferrigno, who has portrayed the Hulk in one form or another since 1977. Still though, Banner seems to be the least developed of the Avengers. To me, it doesn't seem abundantly clear how much control Banner has over the Hulk. That was the same problem with the end of Incredible Hulk. I would appreciate knowing that. If you close enough attention though, you can surmise that Banner is mostly in control. <laughs> what I thought was the most interesting though was the rapport Tony Stark builds with Bruce Banner. When they first meet, Tony Stark immediately gets along with Banner because he understands his super genius techno babble. Finally, someone who speaks English, Tony Stark says. Also, when they're working in the lab together tracking down the Tesseract, Stark sort of consoles Banner over his condition, telling him that there may be a higher purpose for why he became the Hulk. Stark even offers Banner an R&D lab 
a stress-free environment at the Stark Tower. Does this mean we may see Mark Ruffalo do at least a cameo as Banner in the upcoming Iron Man 3? I hope so. There are some other notable Stark and Banner moments, but they'll spoil too much. However, while Tony Stark gets along with Banner, he butts heads with Captain America. Of course, this is a result of their differing personalities. Captain America is a soldier. He's a brilliant tactician. He follows orders that are given to him by his superiors. Tony Stark is a rebel. He's impulsive. He flaunts authority. This is most telling in a scene when, where Tony Stark reveals that he's been surreptitiously hacking into S.H.I.E.L.D.'s computer system to find out what Fury is hiding. Captain America, of course, doesn't stand for this. Their orders are to find a Tesseract. He's not going to accept Stark subverting Fury's authority. Interestingly enough, Banner defends Stark's actions, knowing that something fishy does seem to be going on. Tony Stark ended up being right, though, as he always is. In the end, though, especially after events in the middle of the film, Captain America and Iron Man put aside their differences and worked together to save the world. Thor. I like Thor. He has a sort of Shakespearean quality that I admire. At one point or another, he ends up fighting the other three main Avengers. <laughs> For Captain America and Iron Man capture Loki early in the film, Thor shows up and takes Loki from him with the intent of returning him to Asgard. So Thor fights Iron Man and Captain America. But they're evenly matched. They can't defeat each other. <laughs> so they agree to work together. Thor also fights the Hulk in the middle of the film when Banner hulks out due to Loki's meddling. You know, I actually found the end of the film Thor heartbreaking. I was hoping to see Natalie Portman as Jane Foster show up to tie up loose ends from that film. She doesn't. She's mentioned and appears on a computer screen, but that's it. I figure given how the film Thor ends, that this could be a one-time trip for Thor. I figured Thor would take the time to see Jane Foster and explain that he might not be able to come back in him, but he's going to try. I know Joss Whedon said that he wanted to reduce the number of secondary characters appearing in this film to create the isolation necessary to build a team. I mean, John Favreau executive produced the film, but he doesn't appear as Happy Hogan. However, Gwyneth Paltrow reprises her role as Pepper Potts, and Robert Downey Jr. had to fight for her appearance, arguing that she plays a major role in Tony Stark's development from self-absorbed, selfish individual to self-absorbed, selfless individual. And it's true. There's a touching scene towards the end of the film that's made that way, because Pepper's in it. Then there's Eric Selvig. Now, I like Dr. Selvig. He's cool. He's a secondary character from the film Thor. However, he plays a surprisingly large role in the Avengers. I found out a little lot. I mean, he's not originally from the Marvel comics. I know Agent Coulson isn't originally from the comics either, and he's a linchpin of the Avengers films. Coulson, though, just made his debut in Marvel comics in Battle Scars number one. I'm glad of that. He's become a fan favorite. Coulson is a worthy canon immigrant, just like Harley Quinn and Chloe Sullivan. Because of all of this, it just doesn't seem fair for Jane Foster. But I guess we'll have to wait until Thor 2 to see what happens with her. Toby Smulders from How I Met Your Mother appears as Maria Hill. She's supposed to be Nick Fury's girl Friday or right hand woman. She doesn't do much. Apparently Smulders is in the film because Joss Whedon had considered her to star in a live action Wonder Woman film he was supposed to direct and never materialized. He's still cool on How I Met Your Mother. Hawkeye. Can't say much about him. Black Widow. Beats up guys while tied to a chair. All while Agent Coulson waits for her on the phone. And she manages to trick a trickster god. <laughs> Enough said. Of course, as in all these films, D. Stanley has a cameo. <laughs> there are a few things I think some hardcore comics fans may not like. 
one thing they never say, Avengers Assemble. You do see the phrase on a TV at the end of the film in a blink and you miss it scene. The Hulk also doesn't say, Hulk SMASH! <laughs> Instead, Captain America says it. The Hulk also doesn't say, You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. It'd be cool if Mark Ruffalo would have said that. But then again, he doesn't say that in the film Incredible Hulk either. Black Widow has these gauntlets that I understand in the comics have gadgets in them. He doesn't use them in the film. She just uses guns and an alien staff weapon at one point. Now these things are just minor things. It shouldn't ruin the film for anyone. If you're going to be that petty, don't see the film. You're going to miss out on something wonderful. Now how did the Avengers make me feel? I walked out of the theater after watching this film on Cloud Nine. I haven't felt that up or high, if you will, in a long time. As a result, I felt a little guilty. I'm a deeply spiritual Catholic, and I thought to myself, Why do I feel this way when I leave Mass every Sunday? Why does it get Avengers that make me feel this way? Now, it's not like I haven't felt this way after a religious event. I often feel the same way after I leave something we had in New York called the Catholic Underground. There's a link below if you want to check that out. Check I think what they both have in common though, is catharsis. You just feel so alive after you face a fear-inducing experience, whether it's the fear of God or even simulated fear in a film. You can say watching the Avengers is like a religious experience. It's Nerdvana. <laughs> I eagerly await Avengers 2, and I know they're going to make an Avengers 2, since the Avengers has already made billions of dollars. Yeah, that's billions with a B. In conclusion, the Avengers in IMAX 3 is already the film of the summer, maybe the film of the year. It's a must-see. If you haven't seen it yet, see it. And how dare you! <laughs> if you've already seen it, see it again. And I know I will, and I'll be assembling others to go with me. Also, definitely stay to the absolute end of the credits. As with all these films, there's an extra scene at the end, and then there's another funny one at the end of the credits. Now, one last time, Avengers Assemble. This concludes Mario Pacheco's Little Chair of Rage. If you like what you have seen, leave like, favorite, subscribe, and comment. All those nice things. Thanks for watching. God bless you all. And God bless America.